Cell's development continues. No one even knows it's happening. But there's a strange, unforeseen occurrence. He begins mutating. Mutating into something else. Something completely different than what he was intended to be. He's a monster now. A literal monster, unlike the figurative one he was before. But Cell is about to emerge, in a much different and more unexpected form. Today, we arrive at the finale of the series. What's gonna happen here? And how will the story conclude after all these parts? That's what we'll be covering today. For this video, we'll set a like goal of 2,500 likes. Of course, the series is over, but if we do hit that like goal, it lets me know that you guys wanna see more series like this one, and it really does help out the channel. Without further ado, let's discuss the finale of the scenario. Of course, Cell's development is completely unknown to everybody, especially the fact that he's turning into whatever this is. At the time, Granola and Goku aren't on Earth, but other people are still there. Trunks is training at Capsule Corp one day, and he senses something very peculiar. It's Goku's energy, Gohan's. He senses his father, he senses Vegeta. There's even other presences that he doesn't recognize. And the weirdest of all, he senses something that feels like his own key. A very strange sensation because he doesn't really ever sense his own key. Goten rushes over, he feels it too, and Gohan eventually meets them as well. Something very bad's about to happen. Tremors are sensed far away. In the middle of nowhere, the ground erupts. It's almost like a volcano. It's already happened by the time Gohan, Trunks, and Goten get there. What they see in front of them is unlike anything they've ever seen before. It's a giant monster. This is Cell Max. It's not the normal Cell we know, or even the normal Cell Max that we know. It's a mutated version of Cell that ended up turning to this. With all the great data he gathered, it was a little bit overwhelming. This version of Cell couldn't contain all that power, and with all of this mixed together, it created the perfect storm. Trunks immediately powers up, with Gohan and Goten following as well. They all rush in, trying to see if they could even fight this monster. They don't know what it is or who it is, but they know they need to stop it. Whatever it is, it's something that's gonna cause havoc. It seems to be completely mindless. And Trunks notes something pretty important. He sees, there's a vital point of the monster's head. Okay, that makes it pretty easy. As long as they can land a direct powerful attack right there, that should be able to defeat the monster. But there's a big issue with that. First of all, that seems to be the only vital point that Trunks can find. But even worse is the fact that they don't have enough power to actually injure him. They try and attack him, even try to block against his attacks, but nothing works. This monster is too strong, but at least they're distracting him, preventing any other further destruction. They're gonna need some serious help here, and it's gonna have to come quickly. Thankfully, somebody else does arrive. A purple streak of light flies across the battlefield. Cell Max is barely able to dodge the attack in time. The three warriors look to where that trail leads to, seeing a familiar but also different face. It's Vegeta, but he looks weird. Something about him is very different. Thankfully, he was on Earth at this time, and he appears to be in a Super Saiyan 4 form, but something else is really weird about it. It's purple now, and he has no eyebrows either. Freaky, but also, they don't know what this is. Vegeta doesn't know what this monster is, but he can't hold back against it. This is his full power, the power of Ultra Ego, combined with that of Super Saiyan 4. For a brief moment, Cell appears shocked, but then goes back to his mindless rampage. Vegeta thinks he could end this quickly, and Trunks shouts to Vegeta, telling him about Cell's vital point. If he could strike his head, getting a direct hit there might be able to kill this monster. Vegeta says that sounds simple enough. He powers up, encapsulated by purple flames, disappearing from sight. Cell is able to try and attack him, and Vegeta attacks back. Their fists clash, and even with the size disparity, Vegeta is able to match him in terms of strength. But that's concerning to him. He's only matching this monster. How, how is he not above him? As Gohan, Trunks, and Goten watch, Gohan notes something that might be a pretty big deal. They sense everybody else's key within this monster, so what if that means he has the same powers as them too? So that means no matter how strong Vegeta is, Cell has that same strength, doesn't he? And they watch on. Vegeta begins charging attack, launching right towards the vital point of Cell's head. Vegeta's flying over at immense speeds, with one hand behind him, carrying a rampaging purple flame. At the very last moment, they yell out to Vegeta, telling him to watch out. Cell might have the same powers. And this makes Vegeta flinch, but it saves his life. Because at the same moment that he's about to strike, Cell strikes with his own attack. Launching one very similar to Vegeta's, another Hakai. Vegeta's barely able to fly back, then launching his own attack, countering Cell's with his. Had he tried to strike Cell's vital point, Cell would have been able to erase him. How does he have this power? He could, he could use the Hakai? And now Vegeta notices too, that energy within him. He could sense everybody's power, but also his own. Not to mention, that god of destruction energy. Something that the others couldn't even sense, but he can. As the two attacks hit each other, a massive explosion is created, flinging both Cell Max and Vegeta backwards. The shockwave alone is strong enough to knock the other three over as well. What are they supposed to do here? Vegeta gets back up quickly. This damage will fuel him, but to what end? Of course, this fight will help him grow stronger in Ultra Ego, but still. He thinks the same will apply to Cell as well. Not to mention, the more damage he takes, the more tired out he's gonna get. It's a double-edged sword. But they're gonna have to try everything they can. If only Goku and Granola were here, they could probably help. 
but Vegeta turns to the others, promising them he'll do anything in his power to defeat this monster. He could do it. An explosive battle between the two destructive powers ensues. Vegeta is impressed at first, seeing that this monster has the same strength as him, but he sees no point being impressed. This monster is mindless. Whatever it is isn't even in this for the battle. It's just rampaging with no endgame. It's almost mechanical, like this thing isn't organic. Of course, it technically is a bio-android, but they don't know that, and they don't know the actual backstory of what this is. They just think it's some alien from outer space attacking Earth or something. It's not like they can even go to the lab and find out info about it because it's completely destroyed. This whole area is scorched. Plumes of lava shoot up from the ground, swirling into Cell Max's aura, turning from an orange hue to a purple one. Telekinetically, Cell gathers it all in his hand, charging it with his destructive key. With a fiery purple ball of energy in his hand, he lunges towards Vegeta. A massive, destructive, and scorching attack. Vegeta's barely able to charge his own in time, trying to counter it once again. With the two Akais canceling each other out, another explosion is generated, this one flinging purple lava everywhere. Sure, Vegeta can hold this monster off, but if this battle continues any longer, the entire planet's gonna be destroyed at this rate. It's just getting worse and worse. But thankfully, with this battle going on, of course other people are gonna sense it, specifically Goku and Granola. It did take some time for them to arrive, but thanks to help from Beerus and Whis, they're here now. Of course, they're very far away from the battlefield, and Beerus is interested in what this monster is, that energy coming off him. What is that? He sits back and watches the fight as Goku and Granola fly in. Vegeta's joined by the two of them, glad to see them here, and Granola's amazed at Vegeta's new power, Seeing how far Vegeta's come really makes him kind of proud. I mean, they are rivals after all, but he can't focus on that at the moment. They need to focus on this monster, whatever it is. He notes the same vital point that Trunks does, and he tries to see if he could find any others, but it seems like there's nothing there. They have to strike that one area, but at least he could find something. That means there is a way out of this. He just needs to get an attack in. Maybe if he could charge one up long enough, it'll be able to destroy this monster. That's good enough for Goku. He transforms, going into Ultra Instinct. Looking at Vegeta, saying the two of them will hold this monster back. The fruits of their training will be shown here, and Granola follows suit, being surrounded by that same aura as Goku, except his hair turns a silverish color, the complete Ultra Instinct. Whis watches on with delight, as well as Beerus too. He's interested to see how this power will work for Granola in a setting like this. Although, Granola's not really going to be on the front lines. He will be fighting Cell Max, but the entire time, he's more so focused on charging an attack, while Goku and Vegeta act as distractions, able to hold off the monster. But there's one thing that they forgot to account for. Since this monster has the same powers as everybody else here, he also would have the same powers as Granola. Of course, that doesn't mean he's going to have the double red eyes and be able to see as accurately as him. I mean, this guy is a rampaging monster. He's not going to have the mind that Granola has. But he's able to pick up on discreet things about everybody's movements. Even with Goku using Ultra Instinct, or Granola using it for himself and trying to charge up an attack, Cell Max can see the cracks within their forms. There's still minor imperfections, things that he could use to avoid their attacks, or even counterattack. His senses are just as heightened as theirs. Luckily, he doesn't have the mind for Ultra Instinct, because otherwise, they'd be pretty screwed. And as they're battling, Granola hears a voice in his head. Then Goku does as well. Same for Vegeta. Beerus and Whis watch on. Interesting for this guy to join at this moment. It's the Grand Supreme Kai, communicating with them, asking if they need help. Earth might be destroyed at this rate. And yeah, they could clearly see that. He wants to get more info about what's going on, but this gives Granola an idea. The Grand Supreme Kai contacting them. He asks, the Grand Supreme Kai was at the Tournament of Power, and he definitely saw this. Remember those two Saiyans from Universe 6? They fused with some earrings or whatever? The same kind that the Kais have. Oh yeah, the Batara earrings? And he sees what Granola's asking. Does he want to use them and fuse? Wait, so it is possible. Granola was curious about them, but if that's actually a possibility, definitely. They're gonna need those. Maybe if he combines his powers with someone, they'll be able to outpace and overpower this monster. But there's kind of an issue. How is he gonna get his hands on the Batara earrings? Well, that's pretty simple. The Grand Supreme Kai uses the Kai Kai, coming to Earth really quickly, and in one swift motion, he hands Granola the Patara earrings, then teleporting back to his planet. And Granola looks down at his hands amazed. The power of these things. Imagine what a fusion with him and someone else would be like. And he has the perfect idea of who to fuse with. The Grand Supreme Kai was talking to everyone, so Goku and Vegeta have heard the conversation as well. And Goku knows exactly what Granola is thinking. Automatically, he rushes over to Granola, asking for one of the earrings. And in their minds, they could still hear the Grand Supreme Kai instructing them, telling them how to use these things. Thankfully, the Grand Supreme Kai is able to note that this isn't permanent, but possibly if they use too much power, the fusion will run out. They've basically got one chance at this. If this fails, Cell Max will keep growing stronger and stronger, and they might not have another shot. Without hesitation, Goku puts one of the earrings on, looking at Granola. He does the same, thanking Goku. He smirks, even chuckling a bit as he does this. He's excited, and Goku is too. While still in Ultra Instinct, the two of them then fly towards each other. Everyone watches on as they spin around in midair, encapsulated by the brilliant aura of Ultra Instinct. And what remains is nothing. There's nothing there. After the aura disappears, there's no one standing there. 
but Whis can still sense it, and even Vegeta and Beerus can, Cell can as well. Quickly, he flings a hand behind him, launching a Hakai, but it's caught by something. The Hakai is harnessed, then turned into a small ball, launched right back at Cell. They finally see the fighter. Standing there with a brilliant, fiery, and godly aura, there's an individual, graciously levitating above the ground. It looks like Goku. It looks like Granola. But this isn't either of them. This is Gokula. No words are exchanged, but he smiles. The fusion of the two brothers, a culmination of all their powers together. Beerus is beyond elated. This power, it has to be even beyond his at this point. Gokula knows he needs to work quick, and he doesn't make any mistakes. Selmax tries lunging towards him, and simply with a finger, he stops the monster. Then vanishing behind him, and with another finger, flicks him away. This flick is able to launch him into space, almost instantly. The speed at which this happens amazes everyone else, they can barely track it. An aura that looks like a galaxy forms around the fighter. Without even moving his hands, energy begins swirling in front of him. He looks up towards where Cell's flying. His eyes flicker into a pinkish color. Effortlessly, he locks onto Cell, as the energy continues swirling around in front of him. Slowly, he swirls his hands in front of him, harnessing all the energy, with that aura dissipating around him and also forming into a ball in front of him. He cups his hands together, as he then crushes the energy into a small ball. The ball floats out in front of him as he points his finger upwards. He whispers under his breath, saying Kamehame. He shouts the last part of it, with the ha part of the attack echoing throughout the area. This is his ultimate move, the Quasar Kamehameha. An intense beam of energy is fired out of his fingers, with deadly precision hitting Cell Max right in his vital point. It's faster than an instant, and soon, that trail expands into a massive Kamehameha. It has deadly precision and power, and not only does it land a direct hit on Cell, but the remaining energy exploding out of it completely erases what's left of him. Calmly, Gokula lowers his hand, and almost like they planned it, they defuse right after. That was a lot of fun. The two fist bump. To think that the two ended up like this. In another life, they possibly would have fought and destroyed each other. But thanks to some slightly different actions from Bardock here, that didn't end up happening. And Granola even looks at the people around him too. Beerus, Whis, Vegeta, these people whom he has a different relationship with. Even Trunks, he has a kid. His two nephews, Gohan and Goten, they're there. And that power that he felt, Ultra Instinct, the same one as his brother. Fusing was fun, but it shows them. They have a lot of room to grow too. Imagine being as strong as that fusion, or even fusing again. They'd love to try it again sometime, but they've kind of had enough for one day. But our story doesn't end just yet. After the climax of this arc, Granola is relaxing at Capsicorp for once. He's had a lot going on, and he wants to take some time to chill. Oatmeal then flies over, and it seems like he's warning Granola of somebody. Huh, that's weird. Granola can't sense anybody. It's been a while since he had to rely on Oatmeal to warn him of an enemy. He thanks his pet bird. After all this time, he's still well trained. He calmly walks over to where this threat apparently is, and then two people fly past him. Well, they don't fly past him, they're thrown past him, being thrown through a nearby wall. Looking through the hole in the wall, he sees Trunks. He easily defeated Oil and Maki, and Granola sees another person point a gun at Trunks, launching a blast that Trunks counters. He shouts at Trunks, think of what he's doing, he's gonna destroy the whole building. Trunks profusely apologizes, Bulma's gonna be pissed, but whatever, they'll deal with that later. The guy with the gun then aims it at Granola too, and he easily swats away the blast. Who is this guy? And this guy's anger. Why are they not taking him seriously? They're here for the Dragon Ball radar. They didn't expect to encounter anybody strong though. And it's not just Granola and Trunks. Goku then lands nearby, sensing Trunks' energy flare up. He asks Granola who these guys are, and Granola has no clue either. It's the Heaters. And seeing Goku, Alex's expression changes for a second, and he looks over to Gas as well, who's standing right next to him. That, that hairstyle. He looks just like, no, that can't be. But as they look closer, they see. Goku and Granola standing next to each other. They recognize these two. One of them, he looks like that Saiyan Bardock that they fought before. And the other guy, it can't be. He looks like a Cerulean. They thought it was just a weird coincidence that Trunks had some red eyes and green hair, but now that they see Granola, there's no mistake. That's a Cerulean. It's the one who escaped before, that one that was a kid. They can't even process all this, and as they're thinking through it, Goku and Granola easily defeat the Heaters, not even giving a Lek or Gas a chance to counterattack. They didn't even realize, after all this time, they once again encounter that Cerulean who escaped and the son of the Saiyan who fought them before. And the two brothers are confused. Who were those schmucks? And why were they looking for the Dragon Ball radar? They call up their contact at the Galactic Patrol, Tarbul, who gladly comes by to arrest them. And Tarbul jokes, they kind of forgot about these guys, the Heaters. Apparently they were involved with the Frieza a while back too. Interesting. Goku and Granola don't even realize the significance of this, but they do find their relation to Frieza funny. It's come full circle. Still, even after all this time, they're defeating Frieza's lackeys. And without either of them knowing, they just had one of the shortest fateful battles of their life. To think that the actions of the Heaters could have changed the entire trajectory of both their lives, and they don't even realize it. Well, while Goku's here at Capsule Corp, 
Grinnell will ask. They should try and spar a bit. And Goku agrees. They've relaxed long enough. The two of them float up in the air, ready for another one of their many sparring matches. Goku assumes a battle stance, and Granola motions towards him, with the two grinning the entire time. As they launch towards each other like they have many times before, this is where our story ends. So, what'd you guys think about the finale? And what'd you guys think about the series as a whole? Like I've said before, I think honestly this is my favorite that I've ever made on my channel, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. It's bittersweet to see it end, but I had a lot of fun doing it, and I'm glad that it came this far and it seems that you guys enjoyed it as well. As usual though, leave any thoughts or suggestions in the comments below, I'd love to see what you guys think, and be sure to drop a like on the video as well, it lets me know you want to see more videos like this, and it really does help out the channel. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, as well as hitting the bell icon to be notified about any future uploads on my channel, including more series like this one, or just any other videos that I upload. Anyways, thank you all for watching, thanks for supporting the scenario all the way through, and I'll see you all in my next video.